Good morning, everybody. Eugene Bear here with his green cup of coffee. Ordained at 30, called, prepared. Now is the sending time or the speaking time from the age of 73 to 83. Found a new word, had to get out my Webster Dictionary. I love it when it happens. I'm also reading a 1952 and older Revised Standard, one of the top three or four accurately translated Bibles that we can read today. Many good translators in the late 1800s and early 1900s. James Moffat is one of them. Beck is one. Rotherhams, uh, also a Hebrew scholar. And it was by Rotherhams and Yahweh, Yahweh to Yavah. And therefore, there's a, a Bible out there called the Sacred Name Bible. If you can come across one, very important. It, it puts the sacred name of God, the Father, sacred name of the Son, extension of self, Yahshua, back in the Bible from beginning to end. It's another teaching. Bishops and deacons, they must hold the mystery of the faith into Christ with a clear conscience. I am reading in 1 Timothy Three, the third chapter, basically. All of the third chapter. Started out in verse 2. Now a bishop, and then there's bishops and deacons. Preferably, they are elders in time in the Lord. Most elders are late 40s, 50s, into the 60s. But spiritually, I guess you could become an elder if you've been in the Word 20 years or more. <clears throat> a Jewish rabbi must study through young age, through his teens, into his 20s, and does not take the head of an assembly or group till he's 30 or 40 years old. So you're put to the test as a young man in your 20s and 30s. You're not considered a mature, older man till you enter your 30s and 40s. And elders are considered late 40s, 50s, and 60s. And even a, uh, a widow is not taken in unless she has no family to support her and she's 60 years old. The church should take her in and support her, give her a place to sleep, and she works in the temple and she prays, all right, in her late years. Okay, this teacher asks three questions all the time. And why do I ask these three questions? They're all right here in the third chapter of 1 Timothy. Have you learned Christ? Can you teach Christ? Talking about Christ the anointing, not the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ the anointing, all right? I come to see your power. I come to see your anointing with the Holy Spirit of truth and the word of God, is what Paul said. I come to see your power. The next question this teacher asks, and I'm a spirit truth teacher, prepared of the Lord, okay? Ordained by elders. Elders laid hands on. I think there was six or seven pastors of six or seven different churches. I went before the board, okay, at the age of 35. I've been in the Lord five years and was ordained Reverend Bernie Beringer, Jr., Bernard Eugene Beringer, Jr., on my driver's license, and then I gave it up eventually. The Lord reminded me, I called you to be a spirit truth teacher, okay? Not a pastor of a group. So I am in the area of sent one evangelist, prophet teacher, with emphasis on spirit teacher. Okay, so that's what you're listening to, is one of the Lord's prepared spirit teachers. I see the word from a spiritual point of view. That's my gift from the Lord. And I would have not got it 
through any Bible college, any man. It was a dream, a vision, or a gift from the Lord. And I give him all the glory and all the credit. He chose me. Why he chose me, couldn't tell you, but he knows my mind and heart. Okay, the mystery is here. In verse 8, 3 8 of 1 Timothy, they must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Your conscience is not seared over, your conscience is clear and clean, and your conscience is made clear and clean by the Holy Spirit of truth, the Word of God. You're renewed and regenerated in Titus, the third chapter. Also, you get up here in. Verse 13, 313. I read King James better. I learned how to read King James. So I may stumble a bit here in the Revised Standard. Who serve well as deacons, gain a good standing for themselves, and also great confidence in the faith in which is in Christ Jesus. I add these words. Christ Jesus, in other words, I ask the question, have you learned Christ? Can you teach Christ? Here it's Christ Jesus, all right? And then I add Lord. He's king, he's Lord, he's head, and he's a great high priest forever. These are titles that the Lord Jesus Christ has gained, all right? And then we read on here in verse 14. I hope to come to you soon, Paul talking to Timothy, but but. I am writing these instructions to you so that if I am delayed, you may know how one ought to behave himself in the household of God, which is the church or the assembly of the living God. Living God, El Yan. The God said, I know of no living gods higher than me or before me. I am the one, the highest the one living God, and there is none higher or before me. So when I hear of living God, I think of Elyon Highest. That's the second singular title, Elyon. First is El, and it actually means first strong and almighty, El Father. Okay, I read on. The pillar and bulwark, there's the word, let me spell it for you, B U L. W A R K A A R K A R K. That's like uh, I used to say Tychicus because there was a C H in his name, but a lot of C Hs in Scripture are pronounced K from a translation from Hebrew to Greek to English. All right, so it's Tychicus, not Tychicus. All right, so we got to look at our C Hs in Scripture. And they have a K sound. Bulwark. Check this one out. It's to fortify and safeguard. That's where Zion that is now referenced spiritually in a reference to Jerusalem in Israel, Zion. But in the beginning, Zion was a fortress built by Jebusites, and David captured it and lived there because it was a walled city, southwest hill of Jerusalem, and David and his army captured Zion built by Gentiles, okay? So it was a fortified fortress city where you could sleep at night and guard it and be safeguarded. So fortify and safeguard but here you're fortified and safeguarded by the truth, all right? The Holy Spirit of truth, the spirit word, the word of truth. And the words being preached in so many air uh, ways by men in error and falsehood today. That's why I'm a Christ-anointed believer. I do not like to claim the title Christian, Protestant, Catholic. Just too much, putting it politely, junk going down. It's nine minutes. Uh, I was going to try to get to a teaching on godliness and that physical exercise profiteth a little bit, 
but godliness profits now in this life and in the life to come. Read all of chapter 3 of 1 Timothy, one of the last six letters of Paul. I love you. Talk for 10 minutes. Can't help it. I love to read, study, and teach the word of life, the Holy Spirit of truth, the written word of God. Stay close to God. Pray. Invite him into your heart, mind. He's a living God, the one and only living God, highest El Yad, and he will speak truth to your heart, mind, and help you be bulwarked, all right? Look it up on your computer. Bye.